Welcome to Stellaris. This is a game that I have played extensively um, and I've been toying around with making a series for it for a long while now. And uh, with the Distant Stars Story Pack DLC that was released back in May, I figured that I should finally get around to make one of these series. It might be the only one, there might be more, I don't know. I really love this game. Uh, I've played it for nearly 500 hours now. Um, I'm by no means a prof pro professional, you know, the, the head honchos, like them, those kind of guys, kind of Stellaris player, but I definitely do uh, know quite a bit about the game. Uh, and I do feel that I am definitely experienced enough to uh, to feel comfortable uh, sharing the way that I play the game with, with you. Um, one of the reasons why I have been a bit um, stressed out, maybe not stressed out, but um, worried about making a Stellara series is because I'm still practicing um, the um, filling in the gaps, you know, talking uh, doesn't always come natural to me and uh, you know when you are making a YouTube series you, you want your audience to, uh, to to actually be entertained by not just the game but also by you as the content creator and in Stellaris there is a fair amount of waiting uh, as many of you may already know but consider this my uh, practice uh, series in that regards, as I may have certain uh, areas in my uh, videos where I'm at a loss of what to say, um, and I'm I'm not going to try to force myself into saying something just for uh, the conversation's sake, but at the same time, uh, I definitely feel that uh, this is a very good. Um, well, experiment for both me and for you as my audience to uh, to partake in, uh, to learn how to uh, to play a game that doesn't necessarily have a lot to talk about all the time. So, that aside, let's get down to the details on um, my uh, playthrough. First of all, I've already pre-created a race. I will get to that shortly. Uh, I'm playing with all the DLCs, including the latest Distant Stars Story Pack. I have a few mods installed. Um, I consider these mods quality of life mods. I will list them in the uh, description, but just for the uh, informational purpose, since there are not that many, I am using the Beautiful Universe 2.0 mod. I am using the Enhanced Galaxy Dark Core 2.0 mod, because I can't stand the core of the galaxy being this bright light bulb thing. I am also using Expanded Colors, which gives me 180 colors to select from, instead of the uh, basic, I think it's 30 or something. I am using the Extended Soundtrack mod, which adds 5 of the songs that are in the official soundtrack for Stellaris to the game. I am using the mod No Clustered Stars, which is a mod that uh, makes sure that starts. I mean, not stars starts, which makes sure that the um, uh, various empires are spread out uh, kind of evenly in the galaxy. And I'm also using the UI overhaul 1080p plus. Note, I am also playing the 214 beta patch and the UI overhaul 1080p plus mod didn't work with this uh, beta patch. I had a look at what the issue was and the issue was that the observer mode uh, on the um, outliner, for those of you who are familiar with that, I will tell you what that is later if you're not familiar with it, uh, but the observer mode wasn't added, so that just crashed the game whenever you try to start a new game. So I just modified the mod myself and added this, and I expect that the mod author will be actually adding this within uh, maybe the next 24 hours, because I noticed that on the uh, discussions page of the mod, uh, 
he uh, said that um, he was going to look into whether or not it was just a simple matter of fixing the um, the outliner and apparently it seems that it was. There is one other visual bug when I opened the fleet uh, or ship designer but um, I'm not terribly concerned about that. I am also going to explain some basics every now and then uh, but I think that I will have a separate episode for explaining the the, the very pure basics of the game uh, for anyone who might be brand new to Stellaris and who might be wondering what everything is about. Not really sure about that, we'll see. If I do explain all the basics in this, you can also look in the description for a link to just skip that part. So with that aside, uh, I've created the Altar Confederation, uh, which is a fungoid uh, race. I've picked uh, intelligent, sedentary and quick learners for this. They are a democracy, they are a beacon of liberty, they are an efficient bureaucracy, bureaucracy, pardon, and also they are fanatic materialist egalitarian. This is one of the, um, I'd say one of the uh, easier ways to start out in Stellaris. Uh, I would create a race with these traits and well there are various reasons why but when you have the um, government and ethics the Beacon of Liberty, you must be democratic, uh, but it gives you plus 15% monthly unity. Unity is very important. I'll get back to that in the game. The efficient bureaucracy gives me an additional two core sector systems. Some players may favor taking a different civics, because this means that I can control five core planets instead of uh, three, which is the, base, uh, the baseline. How many you can uh, control. So some might prefer for instance to take a uh, mechanist since I am going to delve into robots anyways. Um, some might prefer to take uh, mining guilds which gives 10% more mineral production. Some might pre pre prefer to take technocracy to get one extra uh, research alternative and so forth. There are many options and that is all Sports Stellaris is about options. Then you have the, um, the um, where is that, uh, here, the traits. There are a few you can pick from here. I've picked intelligence so that you get the tile output for science increased by 10%, which is a very nice bonus. Uh, sedentary. I rarely resettle my uh, pops. In fact, in an egalitarian society, they are not very fan of. They are very, not very much. Ha <clears throat> yes, they are not very happy about being forcefully resettled on planets, and also the minus fifty percent uh, migration speed penalty isn't really all that much of a penalty. So this is the way I consider it, more or less a free uh, trade point. It does take up a, a slot. However, in this specific series, I will not do the robotic ascension. I am not a big fan of my entire species turning into robots and then have to redo everything on my planets. I'm going to go with the genetical engineering. And that means that I can remove this trait. Um, and I can also, in fact, remove positive traits. But more on that, much farther out into this series. So I've picked the quick learners to make sure that my leaders gain experience 25% quicker, which is a um, very useful thing to have. Uh, the other option for me would have been to take natural engineers to uh, further increase tile engineering output by 15%, but given that I'm going to go with the, um, the uh, genetical um, Ascension path, I may or may not take that in later, and I feel that the leader experience gain bonus is a better option for now. So, let's just get back to this. I picked up uh, Diamond Tropical World. Uh, our home system and planet is called Diamond, and I will be using naming schemes for my planets according to uh, 
gemstones and other various uh, elements. So we'll select this. Uh, we're going to go with a medium 600 star galaxy size uh, spiral with two arms. We will have nine AI empires, whereas two of them will have an advanced start. If you're a brand new Stellaris player, you could put this set off, uh, which would give you a significant uh, advantage as a human. We're going to go with two fallen empires, which is the default, I believe, for a medium galaxy. I will disable the Marauder empires. I, I just don't find them fun. Uh, if you're a new player, I would highly recommend you disable the Marauder Empires. Tech Tradition Cost, we'll keep that at 1. Habit habitable Worlds, or Habitable Worlds. Uh, I like to notch this up a bit, uh, so we'll put that at 2.5. Primitive Civilizations, we'll keep at 1. Crisis Strength, we will keep that at 1. Um, that may or may not be a good idea, we'll see. Mid-game start here, I've put this to 2350. I don't remember if the default is 2300, but whatever. The end game start is at 2450. I have put the difficulty at Captain, which is one level. Uh, I, I guess this is about around normal. I've left the scaling difficulty off and AI aggressiveness keep it normal. We need to use clusters for the Empire placement because the no clustered starts uh, depend on me using this. Um, I would rather not have the advanced AIs as my neighbors, so we'll keep this one um, off. Um, hyperlane density, keep it at 1. Abandoned gateways, keep it at 1. I'm going to turn off wormholes. I am not a fan at all. Um, some may not be uh, in agreement with that, but yeah, whatever. This is how I want to play the game, so and I'm going to enjoy it very much, and I hope that you will enjoy it as much as I do too. So let's just start the game and look at what the game offers us in terms of a start. In the eons since the first primitive altar communities took shape in the dense jungles of diamonds, our civilization has spread and prospered. As our technology progressed to a level that allowed for instantaneous communications, our inefficient nation-states merged together to form a true democracy, with every citizen having a say in important decisions. Now, after the discovery of the Hyperlane network, the finest minds of the Altur Confederation have finished development of the first hyperdrives. The stars themselves are finally within our grasp. This looks like an interesting system. I believe we have actually been placed in a trinary star system. Hmm, interesting. Okay, so we are out here. And here you can see the galaxy core is dark, soothing black. Um, we are currently earning 9 energy credits in excess, 12 minerals, 2 food, 3 influence and 3 unity. 8 physics, 6 society and 7 engineering. We have 1 out of 5 directly colonized system, which I control. That is why I picked the um, the um, efficient bureaucracy. This would be one of three if I hadn't picked this one. And we have a naval capacity of uh, 20 where we are using three which is the uh, initial starting fleet. We have of three corvettes. We have one star base in this system and we have zero strategic resources. This is the outliner which I was talking about earlier. So, yes, we have some of these stations are already built. The uh, energy credit mining station on the sun and the mineral mining station on this planet. I will pick the construction ship and I will go and build a mining station on this moon. How... oh, 18, nice, 18 size world. Hmm... These tile blockers cost money to get rid of. Um, we need to save our money because I want more science ships. And that means I need more scientists. And they cost 200 energy credits per. Right. 
I don't think we're going to do anything about the home planet as of now. Go out here again. So for now, looking at the height veins, we have a choke point here, we have a choke point here, and a choke point here. So these stars are pretty much guaranteed ours. We'll pick the science ship and we'll go exploring. So we'll go to this star and we'll survey it. And we need to pick research, so we have three departments of research, physics, society and engineering, which are headed by Schlugger, Duck, Schnook and Dwarf. <coughs> Love these, this naming list, the uh, fungoid naming list, is, one of them at least, is very funny. Thanks to Lab actually for pointing me in that right, that direction. Um, I think that we're going to go with the physics labs first, another one of those. Uh, that would be the upgrade to our research facilities to get more blue research. Society, we are going to go with planetary unification. I do like this one because it gives two more monthly unity. Also like the heritage site thing, which is an upgrade of the basic uh, unity building, but we'll go with the planetary unification for now. Engineering. We will go with the Sarama Metal Armor, which is a better armor for our ships. And actually, speaking of which, I want to build an... I'm not really sure how we want to pronounce this. Autochton Auto Auto Monument? I'll just call it the Auto Monument, <clears throat> um, which gives us unity. We need to build that. So the unity gives us these various trees um, where there are different um, options, which in turn gives us ascension perks, which are very powerful. I have a plan already for which ones I intend to take here, but I'll just let that rid it itself when the time comes. Okay, so we are out of minerals. I've done what I needs to be done there. Uh, I want to build a trading hub here as soon as possible. So, and I also want to save up so that we can get uh, another scientist. Mm -hmm. We we'll probably hire this one and swap out one of the ones leading the uh, research divisions already, it's, since plus five percent research speed is very powerful. There is a better one, genius plus ten percent. There is actually someone some things that are better than that as well, but we'll see if those show up during the game. So let's just start this and increase the speed to fastest. You can use space to pause the game, I will do that frequently. So now is here, here we come to the waiting part. We now have to wait for our science ship to uh, go up there and start exploring. Construction complete. And yes, I am using the authoritarian voice. You can select your advisor voices. I really like this uh, voice. I'm not a big fan of the materialist. Boundless horizons, endless learning opportunities, bleeding edge discoveries, limited legroom. Right. Not too big of a fan of the egalitarian one either. Do not be afraid to exercise your individual right to free thought. Please take a moment now to practice. The Technica can be all right. No great advance is made without great sacrifice. But I'm not too fan of the echo in his voice. The diplomat is kind of nice. Hyper drive primed, all systems ready. Now, let's see what's out there. We can actually use that one. It kind of reminds me of uh, Majel Barrett in uh, Star Trek. So our ruler. Construction oh. completed. Okay, so they have completed the auto monument. I want to move this one over there. I moved the scientist to there because I want unity more than I want the science just now. Our ruler is Chancellor Mugdal. He is charismatic, and he's an investor. 
I believe he has... Yes, I, he wants me to... His mandate... I will get unity for fulfilling this. Uh, his mandate is to build four mining stations. And actually, specifically, mineral mining stations. Interesting. The system is... Promising so far. The best I've seen. But, uh, oh, now it's now we're talking. It's getting better. So the science vessel is now moving from planet to planet, moon to moon, and surveying their properties. Okay, so we have enough to recruit uh, scientists, so I'm going to go to Diamond and build a science ship, which is a Gurgulator class. Perfect. Um, we will recruit the uh, scientist I mentioned, Glummy, and we will put him into the engineering department. I do prefer to focus on the engineering department from the beginning of the game. Also, we have enough minerals, I think, to create the trading hub, which gives us four energy credits per trading hub. And you can see there is um, plenty of module room per uh, starboard. However, you need the necessary technology to upgrade it to the next level, and then to the next level after that, and so forth. System survey concluded. Excellent. We will just go on. And it's a decent enough system. Could have done a bit more completed. Uh, energy. However, this one looks interesting. A size 17 tropical world. That is a world we can colonize. Okay, so the science ship is done. So we'll send Glorp on his way to survey this system. Okay, our first tradition is available. Um, I prefer to go with Discovery first. It gives us a 20% increased chance to discover anomalies when we are surveying planets. So we'll adopt that and move on. Construction completed. Excellent. And since we have enough minerals, we can go ahead and build a mining station here to get even more money income. Or energy credits. Kind of think of this as money. We have detected an anomaly. Right. So, the discovery of alien life. The IUTS Urgle Glenish has made a startling find on Nordak 2. The planet is teeming with alien life. For the first time in history, we have encountered life forms that did not originate on Diamond. This amazing discovery has silenced those who believe we were alone in the universe. Although none of the alien creatures found on Nordok 2 are sapient, it is likely only a matter of time before we encounter beings that are. We may not be alone out here, and we gain 60 society research. That is, 60 green research flat. The anomaly system has changed. Um, experienced Stellaris players are probably uh, aware of the fact that it used to be so that you could fail. You cannot fail an anomaly anymore. However, uh, it has a difficulty. So this one is level 1, which means a relative difficulty routine, and the base time of researching an anomaly at the same level as the scientist is 120 days. So we'll actually research this one, which is rare for me to do this early. I can't remember having found a level 1 anomaly in a very long time. So, just take research on this and move on. Let's see, this tropical world is infected by exofungus. 
Yay. Minus 10% habitability. Uh, plus 33% tile society output. It looks like a good planet to uh, have for minerals. I do prefer to specialize my planets. So I prefer to have one planet for research and one planet for mineral production, one planet for energy with the occasional hydroponic farm uh, intermingled in those specialized planets. Um, I don't like this exophan in, in the station, but okay. Contact report, simple forms of life. The Altor Confederation is abuzz with news of the alien organisms discovered by the IUTS Ergol Glemish some time ago. While far from intelligent, there is life out there. Intriguing. The Yacht Empire. We have recovered artifacts from an ancient civilization, alien civilization, on Matar 4A. Our scientists think they inhabited this region of stars roughly 6 million years ago, based on the age of the artifacts. The aliens call themselves the Yacht and appear to have been very large and flat arthropod analogues. It seems a single individual could reach a length of nearly 100 meters as an adult, and it was apparently exceedingly rare for more than two or three Yacht to travel aboard the same starship. Interesting. Begins the precursors, the yacht event chain. Situation log has been updated. We now have a new uh, uh, situation log event chain here. We have recovered artifacts from the Yacht Empire. They were an alien civilization that inhabited a portion of the galaxy roughly six million years ago. And then it goes ahead to tell us the same thing. And then it says, if we can find enough relics from their civilization, it may be possible to pinpoint the location of their home system. Very nice. Contact report, remnants. Intelligent life taunts with pointed absence, reads a popular newsnet post on Diamond. The people of the Altar Confederation are apparently finding some humor in the fact that lower forms of alien life are now a matter of public record, but potential equals from other stars continue to elude us. Science officer Glorp's report on the traces found on Matar 4A seemingly only add an ironic twist to this situation. Remarkable. Construction completed. Right. Invasive exofungus. After intense study and sampling of the growth blanketing entire biospheres on Nordak 2, Olg reports that the substance is not native to the planet, but rather an invasive fungal life form of unknown origin. The fungus feeds on biomatter, choking out existing plant life and enveloping terrain. Any future settlers on the planet would have to deal with routinely burning back the exofungus. It is unknown at this point if it can be entirely eradicated. Worrying. Society research gained 90. And then Erg Ulg leveled to level 2. Excellent. We have detected an anomaly. Mm. So this one is a level above, which means that it is plus 60 days. So we'll leave that be for now. I think it's time to build yet another science ship, since we're nearing the point where we can recruit another scientist. I do prefer to have uh, several science vessels out. Construction completed. Excellent. Um, so what scientists are available at the moment? Right, we'll just take the 32-year-old Glajm, who will have 25 years extra lifespan and we'll send him right away to this system to survey. And Glorp has leveled up, excellent. We have detected an anomaly. 
This one is also level 2. No, this is a level 3 anomaly for a scientist who is level 2, so we'll leave that be for now. Note that the anomalies that you haven't uh, explored are uh, visible in the situation log under the anomalies tab. Slugger <laughs> has leveled up. System survey concluded. Excellent. So you are a level 2 scientist. I'll just leave that there. You can go on and survey this. But we got a new tradition. We will go with this one to Bogligo. A new age of exploration is upon us. As we once mapped the surface of our homeworld, we must now brave new terrain, space. There is a galaxy full of wonder waiting to be discovered. This will increase our survey speed by 35% and also give our science ships a disengage chance which is increased by 50%. The disengage chance is if we meet something hostile and the science ships obviously cannot defend themselves so they try to escape. This increases their uh, chances of actually escaping. Curious that we haven't found uh, another um, colonizable system planet. survey concluded. This is a uh, level two anomaly for level one. No, you can move down here. I think that we will expand our empire by going into Matar and build a starbase outpost here. So this costs 100 minerals and 75 influence. Influence is a limiting thing when it comes to expansion. Um, you only get plus 3 until you get factions and even with factions you rarely have more than plus 5 to 7. You build an outpost or a Did it say? Sorry. We will build a star base here, which is an outpost which will increase our borders. Go. We have detected an anomaly. This is a routine one. We search it. We build yet another science ship and take a look at the leaders available. I guess we'll just take him. How does the surface here look now? Build another mining effort here. However, there are one, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six tiles that are preferred for robots. And in addition to that, there are two more tiles there. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I don't think we're going to be able to uh, get all of those tiles um, populated by robots when the time comes. But. Uh, Construction completed. No matter. Coprolite asteroid. Although it is difficult to accept, all indications point towards asteroid LM109D being a coprolite, a piece of fossilite thesis from some kind of massive life form. It appears to be almost a billion years old, and much of the fossil's original organic composition has been replaced by mineral deposits. Our scientists are baffled as to what kind of creature could have produced something like this. Remarkable. 
Um, so this asteroid gets a plus three society research modifier. Hmm, interesting. Right, we had a scientist available and we will send you here. Knowledge is the key to the universe. Excellent. Planetary unification is complete. Ancient ruling tribes, historical nations in conflict, now unified in empire. We must not, will not crumble. Uh, we will go with the genome mapping as our next technology. This little icon here uh, indicates that this technology technology will lead to further advancements in uh, something. This specific one in biological enhancement and adaptation, which means um, the um, um, ascension path that has to do with um, engineering your species, which is something you can do. You can change these traits, as I mentioned when uh, in the beginning, and you have trait points and that specific path that I intend to take will give us a fair amount of, of these trait points. Anomalous readings registered. Leave that one be. System survey concluded. And we will take a look at this system now because we have enough minerals so we'll build a mining station there. And this system is finished. So we'll go on that way. Now that you can... When habitable world survey. We now know without a doubt that a thriving biosphere is not something unique to Diamond. Both the scientific community and the public at large are eager to learn more about the various forms of alien life found throughout the galaxy. Efforts to catalogue the life forms we encounter are already underway, but our xenobiologists have urged us to focus our planetary survey efforts on habitable, life-bearing worlds. So we can select whether we want to begin the habitable world survey event chain, or if we just want to uh, get 20 influence. Uh, there is no reason not to begin the survey event chain, because we will definitely complete it just by surveying planets, so we will select a commendable initiative situation log has been updated which then adds this we need to have a survey eight uh, habitable worlds this one is routine so we'll research that system survey concluded another habitable world for us. Note that even the red ones are considered habitable worlds in regards to that uh, chain. Uh, there is such a thing as terraforming eventually. But uh, currently we can only um, colonize tropical, uh, continental and ocean worlds as those are the planet types that our specific species can live on. As you can see, plus 80% on tropical and plus 60% on continental and ocean. The rest is 20%. And of course, Gaia worlds, Gaia worlds, but that is a different story. Construction completed. Right. So that mine is finished. We'll move you down there. Mm. Construction completed. Excellent. We will also build a mining station there. It's all about getting the minerals up quickly in the beginning, I feel. Solar Sailor. We have discovered an abandoned solar sail ship in orbit around Surma 2A. The sublight vessel was built by an unknown culture and appears to be several thousand years old. One of the massive sails has a large tear where some kind of object passed through, most likely a meteoroid, which appears to have disabled the vessel. Although the technology of the ship is severely outdated, it does possess some interesting engineering design choices. An interesting, albeit primitive design, and we gain 60 engineering research. And with that, I think that this is a good point to end the episode. So I hope that you will enjoy these, uh, this new series and that 
you enjoyed also the episode. Thank you all for joining me and see you all next time.